I must say the complexion looks really flawless like the foundation and everything I'm hoping that it wears well because it looks really nice. It is currently 129 in the morning Let's talk about the makeup my friends. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel So I felt like it was time for a one brand tutorial and as I was thinking about what brand I should do I realized that I didn't really own too many products from NYX cosmetics So I asked you guys on Instagram on my Instagram stories to recommend to me some products that you want me to try out or that are your favorites from NYX. So I went to Ulta yesterday and I got a hefty amount of products, a full face. I do have a couple things that I've tried before that I do love and that I use in my everyday routine basically, but I didn't have foundations or eyeshadows or things like that. So I'm really excited to test this out. We're gonna do a wear test today and just see how I like all of these products. I'm super excited. I've heard really good things about NYX. I feel like it's a good go-to high quality brand. In fact, as I was checking out, this added up so much. Like it was pretty expensive for being a drugstore brand. I was really shocked at how much it costs to actually buy a full face worth of makeup. So maybe it's priced a little higher because the quality is there. I don't know, let's find out. Here's the before and after so you guys can see what makeup look I'm creating. And then of course we'll do a wear test at the end. So let's get right into it. So I got a couple brow recommendations. The first one that a lot of you guys said that I should try is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I have used this, I've owned it for a while and I do really like it. There were a couple other products that I wanted to pick up based off of your recommendation. Um, the NYX Precision Brow Pencil was one and then the uh, NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. So that's what we're gonna start off with today. I'm gonna try this pen. This is the Precision Brow Pencil. Here's what the tip looks like. So it's a little bit more of a flat edge, which I'm excited about actually. And it has a spoolie on the other side. I'm excited about this because usually when brow pencils have shapes like this, you're able to fill in the brows a little bit more quickly than others. So I'm gonna start off by filling in the outside of the brow here. I think this is a good shade match for me. I picked Ash Brown. That's the shade that this is. I'm gonna brush down the top of the brows and then fill in that top portion. So far I'm really liking how easy it is for me to do a brow with this. The formula is a little bit more waxy than what I personally prefer, but I'm getting a nice result so I can't really complain. I do like that I can brush it through and it makes it look more natural. What do we think of that brow? Not too shabby. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow and then we will move on to the next step. So there's the brow so far using just the Precision Brow Pencil. I think I'm gonna go in with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. This is also in the shade Ash Brown. And I'm just gonna use this along the edges to make the brows a little more precise. All right, so there's the brows so far. Let's move on to eyeshadow. I'm gonna do the eyes first because every time I'm using new shadows, I like to do the eyes first just in case there's fallout. You guys recommended the NYX eyeshadow primer. I'm hoping this is the right one. I didn't see multiple options at Ulta. So this is the Proof It Waterproof Eyeshadow Primer. And I don't usually use eyeshadow primers. So it just says apply to eyelids, set and let dry for a bit and then apply eyeshadow. So I guess you just go straight in afterwards and apply the eyeshadow. I don't know, okay. So I'm gonna apply it and maybe just blend it out with my finger. I don't really know how I'm supposed to do this. We're just going with the flow today, I guess. While we let the primer dry, I'm going to show you guys the eyeshadow palette I picked up. A lot of you guys had a lot of different recommendations, but the majority of you said the Swear By It palette. And a lot of you guys said that Tati here on YouTube recently did a video on it, so you wanted to see my opinion on it as well. Um, Here it is. I found this in the middle of Ulta was not in the NYX display area, so I at first had a completely different eyeshadow palette in my cart, but then I found it and I was like, aha, here it is. This is $35, but you get a lot of shades. So I'm excited to create a look with this. We'll see how it goes. I really don't think I've tried any eyeshadow from NYX before, so this will be fun. Whoa. My eyelids feel tacky, which apparently is good when it comes to a primer, but whoa, I'm not used to it. <laughs> I don't think these have names. They just have numbers. I'm just gonna point to them. I'm gonna use this one right here first, right underneath the brow, because I still see some veins and discoloration, which is why I usually go ahead and use concealer to prep my eyelids because it kind of kills two birds with one stone, but we're gonna try this eyeshadow primer thing. So I'm starting with that at the top of the eyelid, and then, hmm, what kind of look should we do today? I'm kind of 
of into the blue side of the palette. So let's go into this one right here. This one looks more like a gray. I'm just taking that same brush, tapping off the extra, and I'm gonna start to kind of buff this in the crease area. It looks like a silvery gray blue, and we're gonna use this as our transition shade. So far, they're blending really nicely over top of that primer. I'm actually surprised. I always thought that if you didn't set the primer that the eyeshadows would get really patchy, but so far, so good. All right, we're going into this shade right here, which is kind of like a cornflower blue. Doesn't it look like that one blue in the Crayola Crayon box? That's what I thought. I'm using this to deepen up the outer portion of the eye. So I started the pigment close to the lash line, just kind of pressing it down. And now I'm taking what's left on the brush and kind of just buffing that up toward the crease a little more. And I'm just gonna keep layering that up until I get the right intensity. I'm really intrigued by this color right here. It's kind of a teal. So we'll see how it looks with everything we've got going on now. I'm just gonna take that teal on my finger and start to press it on the inner part of the top lid. So it definitely has more of a green to it, which I like. We're making something a little weird today, but I think it's fun, especially since this palette is so colorful. We might as well do a pretty fun, colorful look. Okay, I'm kind of just playing now, and I felt like this inner corner needed a little bit of green. I took this green right here, and I'm kind of filling out that area in this inner corner right above the teal just to make it look like it blends together a little more seamlessly. I'm gonna take the darkest blue in the palette, which I will show you in just a second, and just add that to the very outside of the eye. So this was the dark blue that I just went into. I'm gonna take the shade right above it, and I'm gonna pop that right here, just to kind of add to the whole gradient we have going on, like that. And then I'm gonna take this shade right here, just to kind of start to fill in the gap right here in the inner corner. So I think that's good for now. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the under eye area just using a makeup wipe. There actually was not that much fallout considering I was using dark blues. There's a tiny bit, but really nothing crazy. I'm just gonna take my finger and press down on the line to get rid of the harshness. I want it to be kind of more diffused and rounded more than angled. And then so many people, so many of you guys wanted me to try the Epic Ink Eyeliner, which I'm excited about because I have yet to find a fabulous drugstore eyeliner. So I'm really excited to see how this works for me. It's got a felt tip applicator which I personally really like. I don't think I'm gonna do a wing or anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and go right across the top lashes. So let's go ahead and apply this and see what happens. That was really easy. Okay, I ended up doing like a little baby wing. That was seriously so easy to apply. I normally have a little bit of an issue applying liquid liners. It usually takes me quite some time, but that did not. I'm really happy about that. Okay, I'm gonna go into mascara. Most of you said to try the Worth the Hype mascara, and I've tried this before, but it was in a video that was forever ago, and I literally do not remember how I felt about it. So this is the one that I had previously owned. It was just sitting in my drawers, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply two to three coats of this on the top lashes. All right, so there's the mascara. I feel like it went on pretty well. I personally have a very specific taste when it comes to mascara and what works best for my lashes, and I. Feel I feel like I didn't pick this up again because it's voluminous, but it's not like as voluminous as I personally would like. So I reach for like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara a ton because that gives me crazy volume. I don't dislike how the lashes look. I'm just kind of extreme in the sense of like, either I want a very natural looking mascara for an everyday basis, or I want an extremely voluminous one. This is right in between, which might be something that you look for. For me personally, I'm just kind of like, eh, about it right now. All right, we get to move on to complexion now, and the number one primer that was recommended for me to try is the Honey Do Me Up primer. This was a very expensive primer, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure it was around $15. In fact, let me check the receipt. Where is the receipt? Ah. Yeah, it's like $17. That is like not cheap. I feel like you could buy a travel size or even a pretty good sized high-end primer for that much. So the applicator is very unique. Here's what the bottle looks like. I'm hoping a little goes a long way. Oh, since when did I have blue on my lip? Was that there the whole time? Oh dear. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm just going to... Uh, I think I got it in my mouth. It's very like sticky, like honey. Okay, whoa. Um, we're gonna start with that much and see what happens. I'm just gonna take my fingers and use it to distribute the product all over the skin. There's big gold flecks in it that kind of do show up on the skin for a little bit at least. 
but I don't see them anymore. Okay, okay, interesting. So it blends out and then it starts to feel tacky, which is apparently good for a primer because it allows the makeup to adhere. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the T-Zone with the NYX Angel Veil Primer. This is my current favorite primer at the drugstore. I just like to take a little bit of it and focus it over the nose and a little bit on the chin and between the brows where I have the largest amount of pores. So that's where I like to put it on me. All right, so for foundation, I picked up the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation. I've heard so many things about this and also it was the number one requested from you guys for me to try. Some of you guys wanted me to try it because you've tried it and you love it. Some of you just wanted to see what I thought about it. So I'm gonna give it a shake before I go ahead and go in. And I bought the shade Vanilla. I'm really hoping that it's a good match for me. It seems like it's going to be. Okay, I'm gonna take my handy dandy Real Techniques buffing brush. And I'm gonna warm this up on the back of my hand first and then kind of put a couple dots on the skin and let's go ahead and blend this out. So what I'm noticing first is it's not as full coverage as I thought it would be initially, which is really good. I think it's a buildable formula though. So I just keep taking little bits off the back of my hand and buffing it out all over the skin. And then we might have to build it up a little bit more than I was anticipating. I'm gonna do one more pump on the back of my hand and I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna start to apply a little bit more foundation on the cheek area because that's where I prefer a little more coverage. It builds up really nicely and it feels like it also dries down pretty quick. All it says on the front of this is that it's a full coverage foundation. I definitely think that it can be a full coverage foundation, but you can build it up as well. Um, but I don't know anything else about it. So I'm gonna have to look it up online before we do the wear test so I can kind of see what exactly the claims are, if there are any. But I really do like how this looks. It has a little bit more of a matte finish than what I typically have been going for right now, but Overall, I do think it looks pretty nice. So let's do concealer. I also picked up the Can't Stop Won't Stop concealers and I grabbed two shades because I always grab two shades of concealers and the one that would have matched me was out of stock at Sephora. I mean Ulta. I'm hoping this won't be too dark. We're gonna have to mix them. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple stripes of this because it's clearly dark. And then hopefully this one comes to the rescue. That one is very light. So hopefully the combo of the two makes something decent. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly blend that out with my sponge. The concealer is blending out really nicely. Wow, and it creates a nice smoothing effect underneath the eyes. I'm also going to add some concealer and I do have to mix both shades but we'll do a little less of the light shade for the blemishes but I'm adding some over my blemishes as well. I'm just going to go ahead and blend that out with that exact same sponge. I'm actually very impressed at how this concealer looks under the eyes. It's so smooth which I really like. It's creasing just a tiny bit underneath my eyes so I'm going to press that out before I set it. And then I'm gonna go into my favorite. This is the NYX HD Finishing Powder in the shade Banana. I take my sponge and directly dip right into this. I've been using this forever. I'm pretty sure that's like my second or third pan that I've gone through. And I like to take that on the sponge and set the under eyes directly with this. It just creates the most flawless under eye area ever. Okay, and to set the rest of the face, I'm gonna use the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Setting Powder. I got mine in the shade Light, and I'm hoping it'll be a good shade for the rest of my face. It seems like it'll work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and I'm going to take a fluffy brush and set the rest of the face using the Can't Stop Won't Stop powder. That setting powder feels really nice and I think the shade was a good match too. So far everything is looking really nice and full coverage. My under eyes are feeling a little bit dry, probably from baking using the banana powder and maybe the combo of that and the Can't Stop Won't Stop concealer. I've never tried that concealer obviously, so it's feeling a little dry right now. Usually that goes away, especially by the time I've set the face, but other than that, everything feels really nice. Let's quickly finish up the eye area. Since we did cool tones on the top lid, I'm gonna go ahead and try warm tones on the lower lash line. So I'm taking this shade right here, it's kind of like a macaroni and cheese orange, and I'm starting to apply that on the lower lash line, focusing it kind of on the inner portion because I think I might wanna still have a little bit of blue coming down. And then let's take this shade right here, which is a very pretty bright red. Well, wow, it's like a purple red. On that same brush, and I'm gonna kind of go from the blue blue into the orange to create kind of a gradient from those two colors and make them blend into each other a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the darkest blue in the palette and just go ahead and run a tiny bit of that along the outside of the lower lash line just so that it combines the entire look 
and helps it look more cohesive. And then I'm just gonna take this peachy shade right here. It's very light. You might not even be able to see it. And I'm gonna run that really low across the lower lash line to add a little more of a definition along that area. And then I think I'm just gonna go right into mascara on the lower lashes. I'm gonna take that same Worth the Hype mascara and just pop it on those lower lashes. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush my brows up really quickly because I feel like at this stage in my makeup routine, if I've done my brows first, the brows can look a little weird. All right, I am dying to put some warmth onto the skin. So many of you guys said that this contour palette was good, so I picked it up naturally. It's just the NYX Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. I'm hoping that's the one that you were all talking about because there was also a cream contour kit, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys wanted me to try the powder ones, so. Here's what it looks like. We've got some good contour shades here at the bottom and then some highlight shades. I'm gonna mostly use the contour shades and I think I'm gonna start by dipping into this third one right here and maybe a little into the second. So I'm just gonna mix a couple and let's start to contour slash bronze the skin. I like to take the contour and go along the hairline. I feel like that just looks really natural. I'm also taking it along the jawline and a little down the neck. And anytime I feel like the bronzer isn't blending the way I want it to, I always take whatever brush I used with the translucent powder or setting powder. I don't know if the one I used today was translucent necessarily, but I just take it and buff it over top of everything. And I really feel like that helps blend it all out. I'm also just gonna pinch the brush and run that down the sides of the nose, as well as underneath the nose and under the lip. Since we have this out, I'm gonna take the banana shade and this lighter pink shade, just kind of mix the two. And I'm gonna go ahead and further brighten the under eye area with this, maybe a little bit on the chin, and let's put some on the center of the forehead. All right, so I feel like that blended out really nicely. I don't always use contour palettes just because I feel like I normally just use one bronzer and I use that to contour and warm up the face, but that looked really nice. And I felt like it was kind of fun to dip into different colors and customize certain areas of the face, making some a little warmer, making some a little more cool tone depending on what I wanted the final look to look like. So let's go into blush. Nobody really recommended blushes, but I remembered one of you had said something about the ombre blushes in the past, and I actually picked one up and I wanted to pick up the peach version of that. I think I have like the mauve version, so I wanted to buy this one. Ooh, look how pretty that is. I've been so into peach blushes again. I'm gonna take the blush kind of near the top because I am pretty fair. And I'm just going to kind of dust that on the apples of the cheeks and we'll just build it up as we go. It's so pretty. Ooh, and I love how it complements the eye look. I'm a little nervous at how the lip color is gonna look with this because I realized there was like specific shades that you guys recommended. So I picked them up, but I didn't really take into consideration what my eye look was gonna be today. So hopefully it all works out. All right, I really love that blush color. So many of you wanted me to try the NYX Born to Glow highlighting palette. To be honest, looking at this, I'm not sure if there are that many shades that I can wear. See, I think I'm gonna have to use like the top two shades but we're just gonna make it work. I think I actually am going to mix these two. I have quite a bit of texture on my cheeks right now, so this could really emphasize that, but we're just gonna do it anyway for the video. I'm gonna go around the cheeks in a C shape. Oh, darn it, I just really highlighted that spot. <laughs> oh well. I'm gonna take some down the center of the nose, Cupid's bow, and I'm gonna go across the brow too to give that a little bit of a highlight there. All right, so that's pretty frosty looking. I'm gonna take my translucent powder brush and just lightly buff over that. It emphasizes my texture because it's kind of more of a um, chunkier highlight. Once it's applied, I feel like you can really see the texture on my face. I'm hoping that when I set the face, it might kind of go down a little bit. So we will uh, reassess when we get to that part of the makeup. All right, let's go ahead and do lips. I'm gonna wipe off any foundation that's on the lips. And there was a very specific lip liner color that was recommended. The NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Sandstorm. So this is the lip liner we're gonna wear today. Again, I'm hoping that uh, it all works with my eye look. <laughs> oh, it seems like it's just gonna be a really nice nude. I'm just gonna go ahead and line and fill in the lips with this. That really is such a pretty shade. Look at that, I love it. And then the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Stockholm was recommended. I don't think I have this. I know I have London. Maybe I have Stockholm? Well, if I do, I'm just opening another one. I don't think I do. Anyway, this was recommended by one of you guys. So we're going to wear it. So it's a little bit more pink than the lip liner, but I think it'll go really well actually with this eye look. I love the formula of these soft matte lip creams. They're so good. And that color is beautiful. I just felt like my lower lash line needed a little more 
color, like a yellow or something. So I'm adding some just underneath the existing shadows. I feel like that looks a little bit better. And if you're wondering, I went into this yellow right here. All right, let's set the face. So many of you guys said the NYX Dewy face. <laughs> I keep dropping stuff, honestly. So many of you guys said the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. A lot of you also said the matte setting spray was good, but most of you said the dewy one, so that's what I picked up. And I'm interested to see how it wears throughout the day because we did a dewy primer, a matte foundation, and then we'll do a dewy finish, so. It doesn't really have like a fragrance to it. And the final step, we are going to set the brows with this NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. I'm actually really excited because I love a good brow gel and I had never heard of this one. Ooh, it's got quite the wand. It's like a mascara. And let's set the brows with this. All right, so we are finally done with the makeup look. That took a while. I feel like it usually does take me a little longer when I'm trying new things because I really do try to figure out exactly how they work. I really like this look, you guys. It's really fun and really colorful. So let's do a wear test and then we will come back, see how everything wore throughout the day, and then I'll share with you my final thoughts based off of my first impressions at the end of the video. So it is currently 4.08 p.m. I'm gonna try to wear this for a solid eight hours. I must say the complexion looks really flawless. Like the foundation and everything, I'm hoping that it wears well because it looks really nice. I'm still iffy about this uh, highlighter. I feel like it's a little too chunky for my personal taste, but I like a really subtle highlight. So I could see how a lot of people would like this kind of a highlighter. Anyway, I'll check back in in a little bit and we will see how the makeup held up. All right, I am back. It is currently 1.29 in the morning. Let's talk about the makeup, my friends. Some parts of my face I'm impressed by, some I'm not so impressed by. The first thing I noticed throughout the entire day is how oily my forehead got today. Almost like an hour after applying the foundation, it started to get oily here, which is normal for me, but my whole forehead is so greasy, but it's so weird because the rest of my face, on my cheeks and everything, Thing, and even my chin is not that oily. So that's something that I noticed right away. The eyeshadows remained pretty pigmented. As you can see, it creased a little bit in the crease of my eyelid, which is normal for me. But the eyeshadow lasted a pretty long time. The um, eyeliner seems like it lasted pretty well as well. There's been a tiny bit of flaking from the mascara underneath the eyes. The foundation stayed on my face for the most part. It rubbed off around my nose which tends to happen. It got a little weird around my nose here and it really sunk into the smile lines in a way that I haven't seen my foundations sink into my smile lines in a long time. And I did not touch up the lip. It kind of faded. My lips feel kind of dry actually right now. So this is what it looks like after nine hours of wear. So the thing that I don't always like about doing full faces of first impressions is that I don't always know what the problem was, especially with complexion. Was it the dewy primer? Was it the dewy setting spray? was it the foundation the concealer like what went wrong here especially in the forehead area it could easily be just the primer I don't really know sometimes mattifying foundations also make my face look more oily actually it tends to happen to me so that could also be a part of the problem but let's go through all the products that we tried today I'll share with you guys what I'm most excited about right now and then also the things that maybe I wouldn't pick up or well I already picked it up so I guess the things that maybe I would tell you guys to maybe not pick up just based off of my own opinion here. So you guys probably already know the NYX Angel Veil Primer. Yes, yes, yes. I think everyone should try this. It is so good. But that was not a new product today. The Honey Do Me Up Primer. I'm going to have to keep trying this because so many of you guys recommended that I do. So I'm going to try it with a foundation that I'm more familiar with and see how I like it. And I'll keep you guys posted. I definitely need to try it with something that I'm more familiar with. The foundation I felt like looked really pretty upon application. I don't know if I've really liked how it's worn throughout the day, if I'm honest, just around this area here and my forehead getting really oily. It's not my favorite, but it's stuck to my cheeks really nicely, so maybe I just need to use a different primer. It says it wears up to 24 hours. I don't know about that. And it also says it's a matte finish, but it's looking pretty oily on me. Complexion products are really hard for me to like review off of one try. Again, especially when I mix a 
bunch. The NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop powder was really beautiful and I feel like that's what kept the majority of the cheek makeup on. So I'm excited about this actually and I'm excited to keep using it. I'm always looking for good drugstore setting powders. I feel like there's a lot of high-end options that are really good. When it comes to the drugstore, I've only found like a few that I'm obsessed with. So I want to keep exploring the drugstore as far as setting powders go because I really love a good setting powder. So, so far so good. I'm excited about this. The NYX Born to Glow highlighting palette is really pretty. However, it's not my personal preference as far as highlighters go. I like something to be a little bit more subtle and also I'm so fair. I really can't get too much use out of all of these colors. With that being said, I do feel like it gives you a really nice highlight. If you're into a more glittery highlighter, you may really like this. So I personally would probably pass on this highlighting palette. The NYX contour palette worked really well. I'm gonna have to keep playing with like the highlighter shades in here. I did think it was fun to dip into a few different colors and kind of mix them on the skin. It's lasted all day on the skin. You can still see where I've been contoured, I guess. So I did think that this was good and I think I'll continue to use it. I just find myself using individual bronzers more. Now that I'm saying this out loud, I realize that I do tend to pick up individual products over big palettes like this. Unless it has like blush highlight bronzer in the palette altogether, then I tend to use big palettes. If you're a makeup artist, something like this would be really, really useful to have in your kit. But if you're just wanting to use it for yourself, you might not need all of these shades. The Swear By It palette was really fun. I like the look that I was able to create with this. It is $35 though, which is quite a bit of money. And I always compare that to like the Anastasia eyeshadow palettes. I know you don't get as many shades. You only get 12 shades, I guess, in the Anastasia palettes, and those are $42. So sometimes I just wonder, like, which one is worth it? Which one is better? Like, do you spend a few more dollars to get an Anastasia eyeshadow palette, which is incredible quality, or do you spend $35 on more shades that might not be as good of quality. These are really good quality. They blended out on my eyes. I really did like this palette and I really loved the colors in it, but $35 kind of surprised me at the drugstore. Like 35 is starting to get up there and starting to compete with high-end prices in my opinion. With that being said, I'm excited to dip into this. I'm excited to keep playing with it. I just don't know if it's something that I would say you would need to run out and spend $35 on right now, unless of course you were super inspired by it and you were really interested in it. I'm excited though to play around with some of these metallics. I didn't really get to dip into too many of them. Ooh, there's some really pretty colors in here. If you're into it and if you've purchased it, let me know because I can definitely do more looks with it if you guys want to see that, but I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys think about this and the price point. Okay, the blush was beautiful. It lasted on my skin all day. I'm super excited about this blush. I'm obsessed with the color of it. I think it's so beautiful. Very excited about that. I think my favorite thing was the lip combo. I loved this Sandstorm lip liner. It is such a good color. I think it's so beautiful. And then I actually loved the combo of that with Stockholm, even though Stockholm is a very pink color and the lip liner was a little more brown. I thought it made a really good combo together. So there's the two colors. Very excited. Those two things are very memorable for me and I'm excited to add them to my lip collection. I'm going to keep playing with this eyeliner. I really like the finish of it. It didn't seem to disappear appear or smudge or transfer at all. So I'm excited about this. I'm going to keep playing though because I'm a little picky with my eyeliners and I don't actually wear too many eyeliners all the time, especially not from the drugstore because I just haven't found one that's really worked for me, but I feel like this might be a good direction. The brow pencils were pretty good. I feel like they didn't last as long as my Benefit brow pencils and I personally need something that's going to really adhere to my skin and stay all day because I don't have that many brow hairs. Otherwise, I have a lot of sparse areas in my brow, but it was really easy to use this brow pencil. I almost feel like I liked this one a little bit better than the micro brow except this formula is a little bit waxy. They worked though, like I felt like I was able to make a really nice brow, especially when I first applied them, but throughout the day I feel like it's kind of disappeared more than I would have liked it to. Well, the dewy finish setting spray might have done a very good job on the forehead area today. I'm not sure if it made my makeup last any longer. I need to use it with products that I'm familiar with so I can really see how it works over top of foundations and primers that I know more about. So I'll keep you posted, but I really like the spray on this. I will definitely keep trying this out. The brow gel 
Did it hold my brows up? I feel like it kinda did. I feel like nothing works quite as well as my Benefit Brow Gel, but I feel like this one does work pretty well. And I like how it has a little bit of a thinner formula, so it really allows you to get more of a feathery, natural texture. I do think I'll keep using this, and I'll have to put it to the test against some of my favorite brow gels to really see. So anyways, those are my thoughts about this makeup based off of my first impression. So NYX is an interesting brand in my opinion, because I feel like they have a lot of innovative and creative products. A lot of their products really inspire me. However, I feel like the price point, depending on the product, is kind of high, but not everything. Like the soft matte lip creams, I feel like they're priced at a pretty good price, aren't they? Like five or six dollars? So that's not bad, and I feel like you get incredible quality for that price, which is amazing. I don't know. I don't know why I'm feeling a little bit confused right now. I just don't know if I had like a solid opinion on my makeup. I don't know what exactly caused this oiliness. Ugh, I don't know. You know what I'm gonna do? I usually like to do this after a wear test because in reality I would have already powdered the t-zone. I typically check my makeup a couple times throughout the day just to make sure that everything is good and not too oily. So I'm gonna take the can't stop won't stop powder and try to dust it over top of the forehead just to see how it touches up. And I'm gonna kind of pat out the makeup in the smile lines and reset that. The nose, the foundation really came off the nose. Mm, that didn't look very good. So that's what it looks like after we've powdered. Well, I don't know if this was a very helpful review or video, but would you guys let me know what you think about how the makeup wore throughout the day, what you think stayed on my face, what you feel like worked really well for me. Comment that down below. I would love your feedback as well because to be honest, I'm a little confused. I like the makeup, but I don't love how it wore, you know? With that being said, I'm still committed to trying NYX out. I wanna kind of get more familiar with these products. So I feel like I finally got my foot in the door and I'm excited to become more familiar with this brand because it really is intriguing and I feel like they have incredible products. Even if not everything in the brand ends up working for me, I know I'm gonna be able to find some things that really do and I'm excited to see what ends up sticking in my makeup routine. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, but you want to be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays when I upload my videos. Click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll be notified every single time I post. Thanks for always coming back to my channel and for watching, you guys. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye!